and pageantry, which will offer truly significant educational experiences. The rich and beautiful arts of tribal music, color, design, and movement can be adopted to all areas of the performing arts, providing, of course, that these elements are used with discretion and in new creative ways. We're working toward this. One project recently completed was the National Indian Honor Band, a unique and exciting concept which allowed us to expand the format of conventional band pageantry by forming a 150-piece marching band and 50-girl art corps for performance in a halftime show at a professional football game in Washington, D.C. From Alaska, Montana, Oklahoma, Arizona, California, from over 25 different states, from 80 different tribes, came the finest high school talented musicians to play a musical tribute to our great Indian leaders, history, and heritage. Indian dance teams, Miss Indian America, Congressional Medal of Honor winners, and all Indian honor guards were present. But there was much more to it than this. As a composer who works with Indian elements, instruments, and inspiration in my own musical compositions, I felt that the band music had to have an Indian point of view, a feeling for original sonorities, an Indianness integral to the music and to the entire pageantry in order for the performance to be totally Indian. Much work and long hours of hard preparation were necessary for an undertaking of this kind. Some of the first to be involved were art students and staff who prepared the banners for the portraits of the Indian heroes. These are going to be drawn on big panel, 20 feet by 40 feet, and it required a lot of room space there. So we had to do it on a uh, acetate to run it in a overhead projector, uh, project the images onto the material, outline it, and painted by the strips at the time. Meanwhile, a select group of girls were being instructed in how to perform our national anthem using Plains Indian Sign Language. Hey, you're talking to someone, can, and then when you say you, bend forward and point. See from your eyes with your two fingers three times. Oh, say, can, you, See. All right, all of you try it. Oh, say, can you see that? While these preparations were going on in Santa Fe, New Mexico, the members of the band and BIA music instructors assembled at the Intermountain Intertribal School in Brigham City, Utah. Go, 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 sessions concentrated on the attainment of the best musical performance possible.
to dismiss everybody except this group. Now the rest of the band is dismissed at 2.30. The routine was relieved by an occasional rest period. This offered a chance to relax, get acquainted, or practice one's music. And then rehearsals resumed. Rehearsals on the music continued into the evening in the auditorium. Still in play, we can stay in place. We have the drum introduction and the eagle dancers come out to the center of the circle and we take up and continue. Those dissonances in Sitting Bull are there for a reason. The rather light nature of Powhatan is for a reason, because Powhatan was the first uh, American Indian to meet the settlers, and uh, this was a very happy time in history. Uh, when Sitting Bull uh, came along, uh, there was a certain uh, mysticism and a suspicion and uh, a little bit of a, a before leaving for Washington, D.C., the band performed a dress rehearsal for the students at Intermountain School. Upon arrival in Washington, the daily rehearsals continued. Evening rehearsals also continued. At this one held in the DC Armory, we worked out the final details of the program. And your band's gonna operate from this end oh, at the yeah. halftime, but they operate with the, with the press box to their right. My band operates with the press box okay. to their left. Hey, hey. In other words, there's your, there's your main is, this stand. This is a different down. show now. This is halftime. Yeah. And then when this comes down here, then they turn their show that way. Yeah. Sure. You'll, be, you'll be facing a press box. You will be approximately 25, 30 yard line over there, just off of the right flank of the band. Sort of semi-circle, facing one side and facing the other side. You can do that. Well, you can either do that or you put them on the 30 and the, or the 25 and the 40. To give a little you, you more, get more depth between them. Everybody can see them. No question about that. Start about facing both sides you if can, you want. Well, the, the question of doing that will be lines. Now, I don't know how you can do it unless you can... You see, we're fighting a time element. Yeah. Bringing them in is all part of the three minutes, right. you understand.
long, hard days of practice were coming to an end. The youngsters were ready to perform. Fifty thousand people jammed Robert F. Kennedy Stadium for the game between the Washington Redskins and the Dallas Cowboys. After receiving last minute instructions, the band and the girls art corps moved onto the field for the national anthem. Then they settled down to watch the game. Soon it was time to move into position for the halftime show. The preparations of the last few weeks would now be tested. the first national all-Indian honor band under the direction of Fred Shields and Jack Romine, with Leslie Hanna, drum major, a Cherokee from Stillwell, Oklahoma, and Ladies Art Corps, coached by Mrs. Evelou Russell. Original music score composed and arranged by Louis W. Ballard, Cherokee Papa composer.
Sun.
come Gracie Well. thank the Washington Redskins organization for the opportunity to play for you today. It had been a thrilling day. All their hard work had been well rewarded. Projects such as this provide exciting challenges for young people who are talented and interested in music. The future holds great promise for trained and dedicated performing artists who require the finest educational opportunities available. American Indian youngsters can succeed in this field and be justly proud of their great heritage. This Office of Music Education Programs hopes to be instrumental in providing such opportunities for young aspiring musicians, singers, and other creative people. <laughs>